I want to take you guys into the kitchen with me, but before we do that, there uh, is a little information we need to cover as far as how I produce the food that we're going to be cooking. So really, at the beginning of any of my other recipes is the recipe that we're going to be talking about today, which is for compost. So I'm going to show you guys how I sort out my stuff. And I'll show you uh, how I turn piles, what the piles are made out of, discuss some of my thoughts about um, what makes good compost, what's serviceable for my application. Uh, given the tools at my disposal, I run a John Deere 4400 uh, compact utility tractor with a front end loader and a backhoe. And that allows me not only to dig swales and, and excavate for things, but also to turn these compost piles to scoop up all the raw materials for them, move wood chips around, that sort of thing. So it's enough to do what I need to do and allows me to build hundreds of yards of compost a year to use here on our five acre uh, piece. So we're gonna get into that. And from that vitality that's created by the microbiology involved in this process, everything else arises. So before we start cooking, I figure we ought to cook us up a good batch of compost. Is the first ingredient for our compost not the goat you're a good girl peaches we wouldn't compost you so peaches and ginger and nutmeg and Lucy have been feeding in this area and they have a tendency to use the restroom right where they eat hey ginger girl and so we built up this mat of the parts of the hay that they don't eat and manure and urine and then I scoop it all up with the tractor and pile it over in the compost area. Heap of uh, things that I've pulled out of that corral and piled up here. This heap has been here for about two weeks. I typically like to uh, build the actual piles quicker than that, but uh, this just kind of goes as I have time, as the weather permits. If it's too hot, the tractor likes to overheat. So. When I have morning time, that I've got time to do this sort of thing, I get to it, seems to work out all right. So this is just manure and hay leavings. And then I pile it up, stratified with layers of wood chips to increase the carbon ratios in this compost in the hopes of achieving a more fungally dominant mix. Now this uh, mulch, this wood chip is pretty coarse. You can see that there's some large, chunks and pieces. If I needed this next year, I could screen it and then use the uh, screenings as mulch. They'd already be inoculated with all the good healthy soil bacteria, but they wouldn't interfere with the nitrogen cycle in the soil. And you can already see this pile I built about a week ago. And right up here, we have some dank mycorrhizal action. So we're going to turn this today and build that pile. This is the pile that's ahead of it. Essentially finished, you could use it as is, but it will age another year just because I have more compost than I can, I can use at the moment. So it'll just get better with time. Over here is part of that pile. I'm moving it and as I move it, I have this oscillating sprinkler watering it. So every layer will get water as I dump the buckets in. Over here, that's one year old compost. And most of this I apply to the gardens and whatnot, but I have this pile left over. So I'm kind of compost rich. Overview of where the compost stands. 
at the moment. So the furthest pile is the uh, one-year-old and this pile just on the other side of the tractor is also just behind that one. This pile in the foreground here is the one that I mentioned in the previous video that uh, was about a week old at that time. This is the pile that I built that day and now I'm going to do a bunch of compost turning. I'm just cracking into this pile, which is actually the first one I've made with the addition of the wood chips. So this uh, batch is definitely experimental, but already we can see that there is a good, strong fungal component to what's going on in here. I'm two bucket loads into it. It's going to get more interesting the closer we get to the center, but we definitely have a lot of fungal activity and fungus is the teeth of a forest that's why forests are so lush they have a, a good intact fungal net which is rapidly converting hard woody carbonous material into beautiful loam so that's what I'm looking to, to get onto the onto the farm here with this approach so far so good Turn the last pile. This is sort of the progression of the compost through time. So this pile is uh, three weeks old, and of course, you can still see large chunks of wood chip carbonous matter. But considering that that's around 21 days doing pretty well so pile I have yet to turn it's this one and I'll take a shot after I turn it basically it looks like a pile of mulch right now but I'm gonna put it there I've left a layer from the older pile trying to kind of inoculate the turning pile with the microbiology of an older pile and even after one turn, it's going to look considerably different. Okay, there it is after the turn. We're gonna go ahead and tarp it with that hay tarp in the back there. That will keep moisture in the pile and also increase the heat. And this one should be good to cook for about a week. Then I'll probably turn it one more time. So this is what we have. Sand. Nothing but sand. And goat heads. And this is the garden. We've turned these two beds. They already produced over 100 pounds of potatoes so far this season. And so the compost that I build goes into 30 inch wide, 50 foot long beds, 15 inch walkway of mulch, another bed, mustard for seed, finishing up volunteer sunflowers in there with the shard beets came out of here sweet corn and string beans for a fall crop bush pickle cucumber rainbow carrot and zucchini basil from seed dill coriander mustard 
all of the peppers, onions, and a fall ceiling over here, more carrot, lettuce mix, calendula, and cabbage. All right, well, there you have it. That's how I make compost here on Hockdale Farm. And to me, when I think about compost, it's not just the fertility that it adds in the, in the NPK traditional or, you know, fertility thought, but really it's the inoculation of microbiology into the soil that is most important to me. Because if you don't have a healthy soil food web, then all of the little micronutrients that are present in all the sand and, and everything else are not bioavailable to the plants. They need to have everything from the mycorrhizal fungi, nematodes, bacteria, protozoa, amoebas, all these things working in concert, earthworms. And so when we have a healthy soil, then we have plants that are free of disease. We have plants that are strong and less susceptible to insect pressure and things like that. So that's what I, uh, I do to keep things growing on around here. And I hope you got something good out of it. If you have any questions, be sure to comment. Uh, if you like these sorts of videos, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, after this, we'll start moving into the kitchen and I'll show you what I do with uh, some of the things that we grow here on the farm. So I'm going to enjoy my coffee with my farm dog and my uh, guinea fowl over here. And we'll catch you next week on Radical Gastronomy TV.